Good morning. It is mock EGT morning. And, you know, all these little, it's just weird. You know, you see cars or you buy, you start seeing it's like a film. You know, this looks like a, a film you would pull off the front of the vehicle. That is so weird. But now what I'm really interested to see is how's my charge doing? How far did we get in? Basically, uh, it was like 12 hours ago I plugged this in. Check it out. All right, the car knows I'm here. So let's touch the car. I am curious to see what the battery charge level is. So let's see here. Turned on. So we're at 83%. So we gained, I think, about 30 miles. So wow, nine. So so 12 hours of charging got us an extra 20 miles, I think, maybe 30. I'll have to look at my picture. So, uh, yeah, the 120 volt thing, uh, not so much. And <laughs> yeah, which I talked about that in my other videos is that you can buy these electric cars and you plug them into your regular old household outlet and it'll be, it'd probably be a week. I'd say it'd be five to seven days before you, if you actually ran the vehicle down to its lowest level. Uh, my guess would be it has to be at least four or five days. But I'm sure all the people that are tuned to all this, this ain't no new news, right? All right. Follow me along today as we drive the Mach E GT here later. Say electric Mach E X GT day. I mean, wow. What did I do, right? Well, if you're watching my videos, this car has its own little brain. <laughs> so I think there's a setting on the car I haven't changed. It, it just automatically it locks itself. But hey, this is the new GT Mach-E Ford Mustang product that I just purchased last night. And today will be my first official drive. And I'll give you some impressions throughout the day as a driver. First thing I did is... Every dealer I ever buy a vehicle from, and if you watch my videos, you see that I buy a lot of vehicles, they never have the tire pressure set correctly. So for the average individual, I'm sure they know that right here in your door jam, this is recommended at 39 PSI. And believe it or not, these tires were all within a pound to a pound and a half of being right. That's pretty impressive. Usually they're way down or way overinflated. So... First thing I would do though is I plugged in my 120 volt charger last night. This has like a, a flake look to it. That's pretty cool. So this paint has like uh, metal in it, you know, so it's like a metallic type of uh, finish. We only hope, or it's a very bad orange peel effect on the car. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, plugged in my conventional 120 volt charging last night, 12, <laughs> and after 12 hours, I gained like 20 miles. So I'm gonna have to go search a supercharger station. So that's my next project here as I take my Mach-E out for the first official drive. So follow me along. Yeah, so anyways, here we are. Let's do a little walk around in the sun sunlight in this car. You know, I can honestly say for a lot of people out there, do you, do you really love the look of this car? Does it jump out at you? Is this something that really you think like, wow, you, you know, I think it's a nice car, but <laughs> being I've had so many really unique, badass looking cars, you know, it has this look to it. You know, for me, is it like, oh, wow, this is the baddest ass looking vehicle I've ever known? No, it's not. Is it pretty cool? Yeah, I think it is. And uh, so anyways, it's the Mach-E GT. With the magna rod and just has a, has a good few good features on it that makes me like this vehicle so uh but let's go find some charging stations that's my next adventure all right getting ready to head out good work and you know something i learned through my bronco video or bronco forum is the e-brake which you know some of you probably can weigh in on this can this e-brake automatically set itself when you go to park but what I learned through the Bronco Forum is what you can do is when you put the vehicle in drive, it's still in brake. You don't have to touch the brake 
uh, switch here, you're just pushing the gas pedal and the brake releases. But what I'd like to know is when you come to a full stop and you put the car in park, why doesn't the e-brake automatically come on without you having to pull it up? That's what I'm... I have other vehicles where the e-brake activates once you're in park. So if somebody is watching my video and knows how to program that feature where it's auto on, auto off, that'd be great. I appreciate that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're in gauge mode. I'm engaged with the vehicle, I guess, is we're going to run up to town and find ourselves a charging station. So I guess there's an app here that I should be able to do and find that, right? So where is that going to be? Being I am the total new guy in this. Okay, I found it under navigation. So you go to navigation and you hit charging stations and here you go wow sunset hills that's interesting Let's see what else they got here percival wow okay well not really where i want to go ashburn so i know of some locations and best western Least there, okay, there you go. All right, I figured it out. Okay, cool. So it shows it's got a fast charge and Ford network. Awesome, that's where I'm going. All right, so my first official out in the field driving my new Mach E. And so let's see how the Whisper, I should say the Engage, says I have 156 miles. And, you know, what's interesting is, what is the actual Mach-E GT maximum range? And I'm going to say it's 270 miles. Now, some people that are, are truly fixated on these cars, they're going to have a lot more information than I have because they're fixated on them. And they research them and study them every day of their life. If you guys, uh, for me being a car junkie, I am, I mean, there's just so much information in all these vehicles. These videos are great to post because I think people will, you know, reach out and make a nice comment or whatever it may be. And for me, you know, it's just so much technology and being I've bought four cars. I mean, think, think about this. I have bought four cars since January. Back in January, I bought a brand new Bronco, Wild Track. And then here, two weekends ago, I bought a Ford F-250 Tremor diesel. And I bought a Ford Ranger Tremor at the last second. And then here last night, I just bought a Mustang Mach-E GT. And, you know, just so much information on in all these vehicles. So for me, <laughs> you know, just jumping this vehicle and driving it, yeah, I'm learning as I go, is what you could say. So, uh, so you know, really the reason I'm bringing this up is I haven't been really overly fixated in this GT because it's an expensive car. I mean, in all reality, if they had a California premium edition uh, Mach-E come in, the right package... I would have probably bought that and saved myself a lot of money. But at the same time, I could be a fool, which we all can be fools, that I think the value of this vehicle is not going to depreciate much, and I've got a pretty good investment, per se, with what's going on in the world right now, especially if we if we have $6 gas, $5, $6 gas, and it sticks around for quite a while, yeah, the, the more people transitioning to more efficient vehicles, whether it's electric, smaller, whatever it may be, is going to continue to uh, progress that direction. So to me, I can't see me buying this vehicle where I'm going to see a big loss. So for me, you know, is this a keeper for me? Um, I hope it is. I mean, I think it's a really cool vehicle. I think it's a smart decision financially being the amount of money I can save on fuel. I mean, I drive 150 turn miles every day of my life just about. I mean, I'm out embellishing on that. And for me, if I was really to dedicate this vehicle to driving a lot, I would save a lot of money on fuel. You know, and I know. Is it is that the total driving force? Not really. I mean, you know, to me it's more about the experience of getting a new latest, greatest technology vehicle. 
Am I the person that's, you know, heck bent on EV vehicles? I'm not. I'm the person more, you know, on, I like to see new technology and change. And, but I like that being kind of my decision and not to be forcing me to make changes. So uh, I'm, I'm more the person that, hey, let's let the ice continue to develop and get more efficient and more clean fuel cleaner burning fuel and you know etc and let's definitely have ev vehicles come along i think it's a great idea i like them i think they're neat you know but i'm on the page you have to eliminate all the ice vehicles to accomplish the ev project if you know what i mean so uh so anyways you know just kind of going back to there's a lot of technologies vehicle and for me is i'm learning the vehicle and what's the range is vehicle and my guess is it's probably a 220 mile realistic driving vehicle and I've not Googled or even looked at anything because that wasn't the driving force. It was more about I wanted the GT package for that, you know, really cool suspension and, you know, in the power because I'm a motorhead that likes, you know, powerful vehicles. So, and once again, the GT is not a dime a dozen Mach E product. And there's no doubt in my mind if I told anybody in this video right now, hey, I'm going to sell my. Mach E GT next week, uh, let me know. I'd be amazed if I didn't get a lot of hits of, yeah, I, I'm very interested in buying your Mach E GT. So, uh, all right. Now we're behind a very slow vehicle, which I guess if I go really slow, this really helps my, my electric capability. So I guess you shouldn't complain if you drive really slow in an electric vehicle, right? <laughs> yeah, we're doing 38 miles an hour right now. Hey, the guy picked up speed. We're doing 42 now. Beautiful sunny day. You know, it's really cool. If I'd have bought this car yesterday, you know, I'd have been riding around in the rain. So it really kind of worked out to my advantage that I was able to uh, pull this deal off and get it today because uh, it's just a really nice sunny day. It's not too cold, not too warm. And it's just really good conditions for me to take a new ride and have a ride. So look here, I'm just noticing this, the one pedal drive. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that is the car brakes once I let off the gas pedal. Uh, yeah, should we try that? Probably should. Let's see what happens with that. You know, like I say, I'm the newbie guy. And yeah, and I know there's a lot of video people probably watch this going, come on, man, you don't even know the car. All right, I just bought four cars in the last, you know, 45 days. Okay, all right. Yeah. So is it over yet? Probably not. So I can feel that. So yeah. So when you let off the gas, right? The gas. This is funny. When you let off the uh, pedal down here, the push pedal, <laughs> to push the, my go kart or my golf cart, I mean, <laughs> down the road, that one pedal driving makes it so that the car, does it regenerate, you know, uh, battery power is that what that's about yeah i'll sure people weigh in and tell me right all right 152 miles and so today i literally have about 130 mile drive and you know i'd prefer not to push it so i think i'm gonna have to charge this thing before i go anywhere i mean it could be 150 miles in our reality so I'm going to go to the charging station, hang out there a little while, and uh, there you go, right? Get to kind of, whoa, there's a guy getting ready to pull out in front of me, and the roads are dangerous. That's why body shops stay in business. People crash all the time. All right, you know what's interesting? Why don't they have a rear hatch, a rear hatch uh, button? That is, is it down here or something? I mean, I don't see it. Once again, somebody may weigh in and say, hey, uh, hey, dude, you got to look over here. So interesting, no rear hatch button. Is it up here? I doubt it. All right. All right. You know, it is freaky. I turn the button on, you know, and I mean, and literally I am waiting for that. And that's, and that's another whole really good conversation here is, you know, there's so many people out there that are anti-EV. I mean, you know, a lot of people be like, what are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. I'm on a lot of different car forums, 
and ice age you know people they're just like i would they'll never own an ev i mean they'll never own one and people be like well we'll have no choice oh uh, yeah well uh, there's no way the ev re revolution to you know, eliminate gas cars the next 10 years 20 years it's not going to happen so there are a lot of people out there and you know a lot of people my age group that are just like no way man in fact one of my favorite car forums that I'm on all the time, I mean, a lot of the guys are calling me out, you know, they're like, oh my God, you've fallen victim to the EV stuff. And, you know, as I've said from the beginning, this is about the experience. It's, I'm about the technology. I like to explore and learn things. So, you know, it's more of that driving force than me saying, hey, I'm an anti-gas guy, I'm an anti-engine guy, you know, I mean, that's not what this is all about. It's about, to me, I think it's a fun vehicle, and I think that it's really uh, neat to be able to have an experience in my life as I progress, that I can enjoy the new things that come to uh, to us to be able to uh, enjoy the drive. So, I mean, that's what it's more about for me, and, uh, and if you follow my videos and you sell the cars I've owned and I've owned over 150 plus vehicles, I mean, come on, you know, you'd probably be like, yeah, I get it. This guy's all about the thrill of the moment. Yeah, right. Exactly. And if there isn't a thrill of the moment, then I don't buy it. If you watch that C8 Corvette video, yeah, I'll bring that up for the rest of my life because I complimented the C8 Corvette product and I admitted that it just doesn't, it isn't the car, it's me, but man, so many C8 guys out there think I'm a looney tune i guess but that's all good it doesn't really matter but i just like to bring it up because it's all about the fun factor if this if this mach e gt didn't give me a little bit of a fun factor experience i would not be in this vehicle i mean so this car does radiate you know fun and it's a really solid vehicle i mean i can't get i, I mean this vehicle is really tight i mean it's very solid and i mean it's just to me it does radiate really great you know uh quality and that aspect of the build of the vehicle i'm not excited about the interior i mean i think the interior could have a little bit more flash to it but i kind of get it I mean, it's the gt version you know it's more the performance themed interior so yeah i agree if i went to the california edition you know i definitely can get a much more nicer theme leather you know plush interior so uh don't anybody take it to heart on that conversation me kind of making comments all right definitely a little freaky being that you know i turn the car on and i'm literally waiting for the engine noise i mean that's just how you know come on how many years i mean for me I've been driving vehicles for 42, 43 years and to drive this vehicle and to get in it and turn it on and no engine noise. I mean, it's just, it's just, it definitely is something, you know, that you will take time, will take time to kind of get accustomed to this type of stuff, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, so, you know, going back to, you know, the EV age is upon us. And, you know, I just think there's a lot of people that they're not going to jump. They're not going to jump to the EV. I, mean, I can't see it. So, which, you know, once again, I am such an individual life. I am glad that everybody has a Mach E GT. What's, I mean, we all want to have different things. That's what makes life exciting, you know. So, uh, not, you know, for me, this isn't videos that I post on my YouTube channel about creating, you know, divisions that isn't my goal my goal is to share my experience so others can watch my video and they can kind of relate with it or they can you know meaning they're going to be like hey you know i'm just not an ev guy i've watched your video and that doesn't excite me and i'm not gonna i'm not on a wall one or another individual will be like hey that really looks like a nice you know mach e gt i really like the grabber blue or i like the look but a rather different color or, yeah, I'm hearing you on your point now, this feature, that feature. So, you know, the goal is to, you know, hopefully help others, you know, figure things out that work for them. And that's what I talk about a lot in my videos is, you know, you kind of have a vision of something in life that you want and or to do. And you have emotional feeling about what's going to happen during that experience. And when the actual experience happens, does that, you know, feeling that you had, you know, kind of come to light that that's what it was. And for me, 
I talk about it in my other videos, you know, you buy a car and you order a car, you know, whatever it may be, or you test drive a car, and is that vehicle kind of what you thought it was gonna be, or is it like, wow, this is even beyond what I thought it was gonna be, or for me, in that C8 Corvette video, if you only really watch that video in complete detail, you'll see my excitement of driving to the dealership with me having a feeling of how this vehicle is gonna drive and sound. And, and then I drove the C8 Corvette and it was nothing like what I was expecting. So that's why I walked away disappointed, you know? And I think people take that conversation that the Corvette C8 is a fail. I never said that. I mean, the C8 Corvette is obviously a huge success, but for me personally, I didn't experience what I th was thinking I would. So like in this Mach-E, you know, Ford Mustang, the first time I drove one of these, I was really taken back. I was really like, wow, even though this isn't a gas engine vehicle, this vehicle has character and personality. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but it's, it goes down the road with no noise. Well, that's not really true. You got road noise, you got wind noise in a, in a really modern vehicle today the gas engine, you can barely hear it anyways. So it's not really that much different. Now, yeah, of course, let's go to the performance vehicles. No, yeah, I get it. That's not, but that's not why, if you're buying this vehicle for that, you're, you're looking for the wrong vehicle, you know? So, so anyways, you know, just going back to how this car, for the EV people, I think, you know, everybody's really excited about this, like me, for the non-EV people. I, I, I think this thing could be, the killer, utmost killer of Ice Age vehicles as far as performance goes and so many Ice Age guys and gals be like, nope, I don't give a crap if that thing can blow away my Hellcat. I don't care. I'm about driving an electric vehicle. You know, so, but, you know, if you think it through, this is 0 to 60, they claim, in 2.8 seconds. I mean, that's pretty incredible. I mean, you're not going to get that out of your factory Hellcat or Mustang, you know, and for the average person, we'll never even pull that off anyways, and there are performance cars just because you can't connect, you know, the tires, that's the biggest challenge, this is all-wheel drive, so this is huge, you know, this thing's going to launch, it's going to get you to that fast speed of that, I'm sure it's three seconds, 2.8, I'll be amazed if I get that exact number, so... The EV Conversations. Follow me along throughout the day as I share my first time. All right. Wow, really nice ride. I'm really loving the ride so far. And uh, you can really feel that Magna Ride package. I just love the Magna Ride setup on the uh, Ford product, the Mustang product. And I just can't emphasize enough. It's a big difference. I mean, it's not a cheap option. But it really is a huge difference in how that Magna Ride suspension absorbs the uh, bumps and all the imperfections and everything in the road. So, so far, it's just really comfortable. So, here we are. We're at 140 miles, 74%. And I'm going to go charge her up. Now, some may be the experts on, on this and say, eh, you should really wait until it gets lower to charge it. But being I'm the newbie, Let's go find out. I'm gonna go to the sheet station here. That's actually en route to where I'm going today. And let's see what they have to offer. Yeah, I'm going through the uh, the corners right now and she just, you know, it's, it's what's interesting is that another Ford dealership I deal with, gentleman there, he's a real motorhead and he has one of these and he swears up and down this thing will beat his Mustang GT PP2 package all day long. It's like this thing just really is a, an awesome road car as well. So uh, that's good to hear. All right. So here is, this place is crazy. This is right next to the rock quarry. So it's just a truck depot. So let's see. You know, I was here a while back. And I just pulled up my truck for the hell of it in our car. And I was intrigued to see what these charging stations are and I actually pulled in and kind of checked it all out and so this is a very busy area so to me this is interesting so is this guy here what's this guy doing I mean is this guy 
a charging guy or is he just a guy hanging out in a parking spot? I honestly think he's just a guy, um, you know, in the parking spot. So this is interesting. Blue handle is, so this is, got to figure this out, right? So, all right. All right, so here's the first thing is this looks like my style. No, it doesn't. Or is this the style? Well, this is huge. There's no way that's mine. Nope. See that? I can already tell, but here's the thing. I got to pay, huh? Plug in first. Okay. So let's see how we do all this stuff. And am I right or wrong on my... Oh, there's the fast charge connection, but is it long enough? Can I reach? All right. I just got her in. It was a little... Uh, <laughs> not real tricky but it definitely takes just line up just right so now what does this screen tell me i was getting complimentary ford member let's see how, how am i a member become a member huh i don't know so guest so i have no idea what you do here this so crazy right all right, so it's saying I gotta reconnect to start my charging station session. All right, let's see what happened now. Connecting the vehicle. Okay. Complicated, right? So it is quarter to twelve. So what's interesting here is, let me go over here and see if my little blue. A little blue light here. So there it is. So it's charging, I guess. But, you know, so how long does that take? So I guess I got to get in the car and I have to look at my vehicle to see what's going on here, right? And that's all I did. People are like, read the instructions. Why do you do that? Who reads instructions? So let's just see here. Let's see what it's saying here. So 74%, all right. All right, so I wonder where on this screen it shows, where does it show on this here? I guess you get to play, right? Oh, I get you. That's the play game. Radio tips, tire pressure, car, parking. So, wonder where. So, it's 74%. Charge station fault, C manual. Interesting. Okay. All right. Second time, I think I got it. Okay, so interesting. So apparently now, oh, this is cool. So now I got it working. So that's good news. For a minute, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to go back to the Ford dealer and just have them plug it in. So now, let's see how long it takes, right? So right now, it's actually now. Uh, so, so I actually get a text and it doesn't tell me how long but it's now about 10 to 12 I'm going to go into the sheets clean up a little bit and see how this thing plays out alright so wow <laughs> So I've been gone for about, I don't know, four minutes. And we're at 76%. So we're at 86 cents. So that was about a 2% increase. So 3% increase is about a dollar. So what's this gonna probably cost you? Six, seven bucks. Charging times four minutes. 
Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Never done it. And, you know, the truce of the electric vehicle will prevail. So I guess if anything, just get in the car, hang out, and read for a while. And we're at 77%. So is this a 20-minute stop? For, you know, think about this. So we're, you know, we really need to, like, I guess 25% recharge. So right now, you know, we're at 77%. So is this a 20 minute stop or 30 minute stop or just 25 percent wow that's scary so i'll let you know all right so wow we are at 80 percent charge three dollars and 87 cents and now it's close to 20 minutes like 18 minutes and uh Yikes. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're telling me that I went from 74%. You can't even see it in my damn shirt. But basically, it's 20 minutes for 6% rejuice. Let's turn on the car here. And does that screw anything up? Probably. So I'm 170 miles right now, which for me, I could probably make it today. But I prefer to be at like 200. So, wow. This is definitely a learning experience. And, uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. So, definitely, uh, you know, I thought these, I thought maybe this is not a supercharged station. You should ask this guy right here. He might know more than me. Hey, I got a question for you. All right, wow, so I've learned a lot. You know, I lucked out, there's a gentleman here that actually is a tech for these Electrify America charging stations. And he just gave me a really good learning lesson. So these are 150 kilowatt charging stations. These aren't the 350 kilowatt fast charging stations. It could be a 300 kilowatt, but these are not the supercharger stations. So for me, and this type of uh, environment, this vehicle, you know, I would be at that location for hours. So you really do need to find the supercharger stations. But he's telling me that the Electrify America doesn't have a lot of supercharger stations. And he's even saying, you know, it, it still isn't there. He, he is an employee, or I should say a contractor, that goes around and works on these uh, super stations. He, uh, as a contractor, drives around and, and services these uh, charging stations for Electrify America. He's even saying, hey, you know, the technology it just isn't there still. It's like, you know, there's, we're on the right path, but really, we're still not there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to agree with him. If you're telling me that if I was to travel from here to Florida and the supercharging stations are very far to slim, wow. I mean, you're talking, I don't know, man. I don't, I mean... Phew, because I just spent half an hour uh, charging this vehicle from 74% to 81%, and I went from like 124 miles to 177 miles or something like that. So it's all about the supercharger stations. And the next thing is, for me, that 6% charge just cost me five bucks. So it's not like, you know, I, just, I you think this through. You know, I gained an extra, let's just say, we'll say 50 miles. I don't think that's for maybe 40 miles for five bucks, basically. So that's like a, you know, what's that equate to per mile that I'm paying for that, that regular charging station. So this is, uh, this is why I bought this car. I really wanted to go through the experience of learning the reality and the truth to these electric vehicles. You know, what is the truth and the reality? And, uh, so, you know, this isn't a, this is not a bash video. Good Lord, my guy just spent all the money I spent on this vehicle right here, you know, this is not about beating up the uh, the new Ford Mustang Mach E. It's about sharing my experience. And so far, definitely an eye opener on the product that I bought and the charging, you know, uh, reality. So uh, follow me along today as I continue to drive around my brand new Ford Mustang Mach E XGT Grabber Blue. 
bag and ride suspension fun factor vehicle. <clears throat> all right, so my blue cruise just came up. Let's see what this is all about. It just said blue cruise available. And now it's gone. That's too bad. I was looking forward to that moment. Crew's not available. Okay, so there we go. Ah, aha, there we go. Now we got it. Blue Cruise is on. Another vehicle that, look at that. Pretty cool. So, how far do we get today, right? See, so she steers herself. Pretty neat. Loving this. And then it's getting bossy on me. I know this story, right? All right. Look at this here. I am down to 31%. 214 miles on the vehicle. And now... I'm debating whether I go by Home Depot and buy a 220-240 outlet to charge this car tonight and install the wiring, which ought to be a project, which I'd rather not do. But there's another place right up the road here that with any luck, it's at a supercharger station. But man, I tell you what, this isn't cheap. Anybody thinks that you drive around these electric cars and huh, it's kind of a free ride. Yeah, you're kidding yourself. It's not. And kind of a real eye opener to me, being you know, I'm the first time electric vehicle owner. I mean, I had a Prius, you know, so but I didn't have what you know that wasn't like an all electric vehicle. So very interesting here. Now there's a place here that I used to kind of laugh at, believe it or not, that they built these charging stations up here in front of this TGI Friday restaurant, and you have this outlet mall over here. And so now I'm really intrigued to see what, you know, it's like a major infrastructure they built right here. Do you see it here? I mean, to me, I was always like, what the hell? You know, I mean, <laughs> I, and sincerely, I've never seen anybody, maybe one time, I've seen somebody park there in their car charge. So I'm going to go by and check that out while I do my research and find out what I need what uh, plug I need and what size wiring they recommend. I talked to an electrical supply and they said that Tesla <laughs> says he's claiming Tesla requires copper wiring over aluminum wiring for your 220 hookup. And if you don't do the copper wiring, it literally voids the warranty on the Tesla's charging system and it'll ruin it. So that's kind of like, so he was really like, you better make sure you read your warrant, your, your manual and find out exactly what you need because these things are very temperamental. So, uh, all right, we're going to pull up here to the charging station. It would be, it'd be exciting if this was a supercharger, but it won't be exciting if it costs an arm and a leg. So I'm looking for 350. I can already tell us Electrify America. I can already tell 150, 150, 150. So yeah, so those things there. I mean, it's total waste. I mean, somebody can maybe correct me on my attitude here. Yeah, somebody out there that's, you know, the seasoned electric Maki owner can say, hey dude, let me share with you how you do all this. And I'm gonna give you some tips. And I'll be like, wow, I love that. Because right now, from what I'm seeing in my general area, there is no uh, supercharging station. Which what's so funny is, you know, I didn't know this language because I didn't need to know it because I didn't have much of a car. And, you know, so over here at this outlet mall, what is their program? So let's check this out. Tesla drivers, EV Go. And so this is that special 
So now the question is, that's 50 kilowatt. <laughs> no way. I mean, I mean, 50 kilowatt? You would be here for days. Wow. Yikes. All right, what am I doing now? I just went by Home Depot. $252 later. Got my number six wire, copper. Got my special outlet. A, what they call it, is a Neva 50 amp flush something blah, blah, blah. It's actually in the, in the instructions in Ford's manual what to buy. So it's pretty cool. Got my double breakers don't know which panel my panel has different setups i bought one of each just have to drive back here later so hopefully tonight i can have this set up my garage shop and it says that with a 220 240 hookup you can get about 20 miles per it says you get about 20 miles per hour charge so for me that works you know eight hours 160 12 hours right 240 whatever that number is. So uh, anyways, follow me along as I show you how to put that in next. How about that idea? Liking the Mach-E today, you know, learning the vehicle. And uh, so follow me along.